Can you explain the difference between fat burning and fat loss? So fat burning and fat loss is often something that people get totally mixed up. Fat burning and fat loss are not the same thing at all. And I think it often comes in with things like fasted training and things. People think that they are burning body fat when they are bur- like training fasted. But burning or sorry, fat burning fat as a fuel doesn't necessarily necessarily mean you're going to be burning body fat stores. So fast you if you're doing exercise and things faster in the morning or something, you're going to want to you're obviously having an overnight fast from the night before and you have no fuel usually left on board. We've went into like our muscle and liver glycogen that we would usually use first for exercise. Um that it's then having to tap into what other exogenous fuel that you've got like at around your body. So that's because that's the readily available fuel that it's got there that your body's having to almost like get forced to use but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily burning fat okay. as an athlete mm-hmm. why might it be like beneficial to eat more sort of processed carbs Lovely and question. sugars yeah um it's often an area of sports nutrition that is um that people take wrongly so to meet higher energy demands for someone who even recreational athletes or everyday athletes or elite athletes, there is sometimes a need for more processed foods in order to meet higher energy demands to meet their active lifestyle, if that makes sense. So in and around exercise, we are needing to try and make sure that we fuel up with carbohydrates as much as we can and to meet higher overall calorie intakes, it's sometimes impossible to do that from just whole foods alone. So it's not that they take up the majority of someone's intake, it's just potentially to meet higher energy needs on top of that and processed foods are very beneficial. Well, so even when I tried to bulk, yeah. I couldn't just get my calories in from like pat, like yeah. even just like potatoes, try 500 calories of yep. boiled potatoes <laughs> and it'd be sick. Um, why do crossfit promote low carb diets i don't know like why because i think the person who's in charge of their nutrition stuff has never done any background of nutrition education and the frustrating thing about that is that especially crossfit which is such a high intensity sport you need your glycogen or your carbohydrate stores as much as possible because that's the kind of energy system that we use in high particularly in high intensity we can't convert fat quick enough to use that for a fuel in high intensity exercise so it's they definitely need to get a dietitian on board <laughs> this is not written down mm-hmm. but you know you you get quite a lot of athletes now that are coming out as vegan yeah how can they like make their diet work as being an athlete so i would definitely say that there's uh there's definitely ways to do it um I think vegetarian and vegan, there's a bit of a difference there, but you can still definitely get what you need. With vegan, you're going to need to go down with some supplement routes and things like that, some of it. And I would say- What would you supplement? So things like B12 and stuff that you're usually going to need that you probably can't get if you're going to be excluding meat and dairy products and things. Vegetarians, you've got a bit more of a um, an opportunity to get in things like extra protein and stuff if you're including some dairy products and eggs and things like that. Vegan, I would say you have to just- be a bit more savvy and clued up before you start excluding things. So for example, a lot of people come into clinic and things that I'm doing just now and decide to go more plant-based, which is absolutely fine, but haven't really done their research or whatever beforehand or looked into it. So are coming in with, for example, calcium deficiency and things, which is impacting their bone health, you know, and just don't know if they're technically excluding a food group, which it technically is, especially dairy as well they're not getting, they're not replacing it with anything else or looking for fortified alternatives. So I would say they can definitely do it, but it would just be being smart about your nutritional intake and where you get your sources from. And vegans in particular probably might need to rely on supplements a bit more than than others. I heard that guy on a podcast say this before. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the, it was Stephen Bartlett. Okay. I don't like a lot of the thumbnails. Don't like a lot of the advice given out Mm -hmm. but it was mad because the guy who was on the podcast i can't remember his name i liked 90 percent of what he said then i despised 10 percent of what he said he just like went off on this whole rant about diet cokes diet Mm -hmm. coke i was like that was i was um he had an amazing hour yeah and then he just went on this almost like rant about a relevant rant that was just felt like clickbait if you know what i mean but he said something class and he 
and I heard you say it. Why? I'm just a long winded way of answering no, it's okay. asking a question. <laughs> I've given you long answers. Give you answer. Because basically the question is, what is the benefit of trying to get more colours in your diet? And can you explain that more? The easiest way that I often explain to people is if, it isn't always necessarily this, but usually with more colours usually means that you get more nutrients. So when I um, say to someone about the old saying of getting your five a day, we don't want to just be eating five apples a day because it's going to give us the same nutrients. We want to try and eat like a cheesy as it sounds, eating a rainbow as much as we can because usually with different fruits and vegetables, we're going to get different vitamins and minerals from that and they're one of our richest sources of a lot of vitamins and minerals that we can we can get in our diet. So, yeah. so add dragon guess, fruit in. Add dragon fruit in, yeah. <laughs> if you can that, source it. <laughs> that's the, Import it from Bali. <laughs> that was the one thing I liked about Bali. Yeah. I didn't really like a lot of... Bali. I, think it's ki- I mean, it looks cool, but I think it's kind of tasteless. You know oh, it felt like they were trying to make an Asian Marbella. Or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so strange. <laughs> it's just nice on your uh, uh, is it acai or acai bowl. Yeah, on but they're the one. It. They're the one thing I picked up. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to get dragon fruit so much. Um, what was the most common? Like, so I imagine if people come to you mm-hmm. knowing that you're a dietitian as well, uh, they'll say similar things to me, me, but they'll be more thinking about like perfectionism with yeah. food what's the most common theme that crops up um with clients when they first start yeah like what's the most common thing they struggle with or like they they have a like a myth that they believe in i probably would say it's usually carbs yeah. i would say there's this uh, uh, carbs the fear of carbs seems to always read its ugly head in another way of whether it's like atkins diet or keto or whatever else it's all demonizing carbs and it's I just I don't understand it <laughs> um that's probably one of the, I would say the most co- there's there's just so much misinformation about it and if you're active the more active you get the more carbs you're going to need and I think it's dispelling that of being like if you actually want to train better and get stronger you're going to need to get carbs in you like 